Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to install a sway bar in my old Land Rover. I think it's the most important thing you can do to make a Land Rover more drivable, especially on the street. So that's what we're going to do today on MetalTipsAndTricks.com, improve drivability of this Land Rover. Here we go, a sway bar. What is one and why do you want to install it? A sway bar makes a vehicle more stable. You know when you go around a corner and your car feels like it tip, is tipping? That's what a sway bar helps prevent is that tipping feeling. And it does it by using a U-shaped piece of spring steel that is attached to your frame and then also attached two corners to your axle. And what it allows it to do, if one axle pushes up, the other one brings it up too to match it out. So if we're going across, let's say a speed bump at an angle, if we're going at an angle, here, well, we use this as a speed bump. This one hits, but this one gets pressed down, levels out, presses, and brings it back to level. And it makes the car more drivable. When you're going around a corner, there's more pressure on this outside. So what it does is it brings pressure on the inside wheel and helps, again, level the vehicle. And it's incredibly important, especially on a Land Rover, if you like to put a lot of stuff on your roof rack and make it top heavy. Because when you go around corners, you definitely feel that. And a sway bar will help correct that. Now, one thing you need to realize that this is not an easy project, the way I'm installing it. I'm installing it on this side, where if I were to bolt it just straight up to the frame, propeller shaft at certain times will bounce and hit up against it. Originally when I had this installed, I had it on the other side where the gas tank is now. And that's a quick installation. Let me show you some photographs of that. That's a quick installation. It takes you about two hours. And you can use, like I said, just a sway bar off a classic Land Rover. Um, and I've, every time I've ever been to the junkyard, there seems to always be one there. And they sell them for about 15, 20 bucks. But in this situation, this sway bar, we have to put it up high enough so it doesn't interfere with the uh, propeller shaft. And the way I'm ending up doing that is I'm actually physically cutting a hole in one side, and on this other side, it's actually cut out in a U-shape. And the reason I'm doing that is I can't get the sway bar to fit properly um, any other way. So I'm fortunate that I'm able to just bring it in just the right size, bring it over to the other side, and now we can start working on this side. I did some pre-cutting on this before I started this video just to make sure everything was going to work out okay, and it looks like it's going to be a really sound, stable installation. Again, this is not for the weak heart or the weak welder. This is a serious modification, and that's what we're dealing with here is we're going to end up re-welding this whole corner, put a pipe in there, have the uh, sway bar all ready to go, and weld it up. Once this is done, the sway bar will not come out. Okay, it is a permanent installation. I never think I'll ever have to take it out, so I'm not worried about that. So what we're gonna do right now is get to work and finish out this side. I've got the pieces cut to put in the frame here. Uh, it consists of a pipe to fit the radius of the hole saw I have. I took some 16th gauge steel, bent it and cut it to fit in here. The next part is, everything's been cut out, I've already uh, fit the pipe on the other side of the frame and welded it up and ran the sway bar through. The procedure you do here is really critical because if we don't do it correctly, you're going to have to cut everything out and start over again. I'm talking from experience. So what you have to do is you actually have to assemble the sway bar in position. Remember, the sway bar is not coming off. So we're going to install the pipe first, put that through, and that's the real key part. Now you can weld the pipe in. I think what we're going to do is weld in, we're going to clamp this all together, see how it all fits up. We're going to clamp it on that side. So now we're ready to check 
and start tacking it into place. Uh, let me show you what I do there. I don't plan on this new part holding all the weight. We're going to add in some brackets here and weld those into position to help to strengthen it. Like again, remember the motto here is we never want to find out we built it too weak. By adding in these extra brackets, I think that's going to resolve any of that issue. So let's start welding this thing up. We now have the sway bar attached to the frame. And if you look at the details, you see all I did was attach a um, piece of angle iron, quarter inch thick angle iron, I think it's about two and a half inches, welded that to the frame and then bolted the apparatus uh, with the rubber bushing in it and the framework uh, to that bracket. It should hold up really well. Next, we have to develop some sort of elbow system that will allow it to travel front and back and side to side because our axles also travel up and twist so we have to allow that when we attach the sway bar to it. Um, this knuckle here is the first one I built and we're just kind of recycling it. You can buy this piece down here with a male and female connection so if you wanted to you can just go with two of these turn them 90 degrees each other and you'll get the elbow action. The next is this bracket here was welded up out of a square tubing with a bracket mounted on it. That'll fit in there. It also comes with a, a pin. The pin is I think very critical. Um, it allows you to take this on and off so you can have the sway bar on for road driving. When you get off the pavement, uh, you pull the pin, this comes apart, and uh, you add that flexibility back to your suspension that you lost with the sway bar. Uh, two things on the bracket is the bottom of the axe on the driver's side is actually square. On the passenger side, it's actually rounded. So on these parts here, they had to be um, well, he had to compensate. I had to compensate for that. So just remember that you'll know when you're working on it. The great thing is when this is all attached, it's an easy operation. When I don't need it, this will pull up and I'll actually have another bracket up above here and the pin will slide in at that point and hold the sway bar up and out of the way so I can use the suspension and it's not going to bump into anything. So this, is a, this has been a great project. I'm looking forward to getting out on the road. I've been wanting to switch the sway bar over to this position for a long time to make room for the, uh, the second fuel tank. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it for you guys. So I want you to get out in the shop, build something cool today, have some fun. Take care.